All right, I have that we are like two seconds away from 5 p.m. Eastern time. And to be respectful of your time and everything else that you have going on, I'd like to get started with the session. So for those of you who do not know, my name is Dr. Kara Jefferson, and I am the program director for the DNP program here at Frontier Nursing University. I am excited to welcome all of you to this session. I like for the session to be interactive at certain points, otherwise it feels like I'm talking to myself. So I will put up, a, there will be a slide where I'll stop in the middle, I'll stop screen sharing, and I'll ask you to unmute your microphone if you're able to and turn on your camera so that I can see you and I'll answer those questions. And then also, we will have someone who's monitoring the chat. So, you know, we want to also be cognizant that not everybody's able to unmute and turn on their microphone. So just know if that's all you can do, do it. But I actually prefer if you're able to, to unmute. So let's get started. So the way that we start things here, we have this nice picture of a whole bunch of students on our campus doing the circle up. But the reason that we do that is all related to Frontier Nursing University's mission. And so our mission statement states that we are here to provide accessible nurse midwifery and nurse practitioner education that integrates the principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion. We transform healthcare by preparing ethical, compassionate, innovative and entrepreneurial leaders to work with all people with an emphasis on rural and underserved communities. So the reason that I start the presentation with our mission statement is because this is who we are. And anybody coming into our DNP program, we already know that you became a nurse. And in order to be a nurse, you have to follow certain ethical guidelines. But even more than that, we know that you're already compassionate. So if we just look at a those two things in our mission statement, you already have some of them. Where we come in and we truly elevate you is by making you see healthcare and transforming the way that you view healthcare and having you do innovative things, as well as we give you and we teach you a little bit about this, some entrepreneurial concepts. But even more than that, we teach you leadership skills and other things just to elevate your career. And we don't ever want to forget about the principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion. I am also happy to say that our DNP department is the most department at Frontier Nursing University with a 40, it was either 42 or 46% rate as of now. So we really take this seriously and we want you to know that this is who we are, and I'll talk about this later, but getting a DNP requires that you do a scholarly project. And the scholarly project is done in your own community. You're not doing this for us, you're doing this for your people, your community, your patients, and as such, that's how all this is designed. So in this session today, we're gonna cover a couple of things. We're gonna cover, well, why should you come to Frontier Nursing University, right? Also, why should you even want to get your DNP? We'll discuss our programs of study, the admissions criteria. We'll talk a little bit about the DNP project, how to get started, and what we do here at Frontier with our DNP professional project advising. So first things first, Frontier Nursing University, we are different from a lot of other universities in that number one we're only a nursing program but even more than that we are only an advanced practice registered nursing program as well as a dnp program so that's one thing that already sets us apart from other people but we also have something called the culture of caring and our culture and caring is not a one-sided thing we like to treat everyone with professionalism communication respect we're inclusive all of those things and so we don't want that to just be from faculty to faculty or faculty to staff. We also extend that to be faculty to students, student to staff. The whole community follows our culture of caring. But one thing that I know that we do really well is we do distance education well. 
your home community becomes your classroom, which is wonderful for a lot of people, but it also comes with its own challenges and stressors, right? Because you can study from the comforts of your home. You can be in your bed and holding your laptop or sitting in your living room and doing your assignment. That is the great part. You could even be on the beach, right? Doing your homework assignment. So that part of it makes it one of the things about the program that most people really enjoy. But we also have you come to our campus in Kentucky for an orientation session. That orientation session is what we call DNP Frontier Bound. And it is a two and a half day immersive experience where you get to meet me in person, as well as some of my DNP project faculty. But really even more than that is we want you to become connected to your fellow classmates, ready to begin your DNP education and inspired by some of our current students and just what we're doing in the program. So the other reason that I know that we do distance education well is because we've been doing it for a long time. But in case you're looking at this and you're seeing this word that looks like Versailles, because you know, French, you look at that and you think it's Versailles, but in Kentucky, it is indeed called Versailles. And that is where our campus is. And these are just a few buildings on our campus. So on the lower right-hand corner, this is the sign that you see when you're entering our campus. And then right above that, is a picture of the Welcome Center where all students go to be welcomed to the campus. We have on the far left top, that is where students are housed while they are on campus. We have three of those buildings. The bottom picture on the left is just a general picture of what the campus kind of looks like. And then of course, middle bottom is a picture of our dining hall because everybody always wants to know where am I going to eat? And then above that, we have a picture of our president's house, which is where we hold a reception for the DNP students while you're on campus. So we show you all this because we want you to be ready when you come to visit us on campus and see what we're about. So I talked a little bit about how we have all of this experience with distance education. Yeah, it's actually over 80 years in graduate nursing and midwifery education total. Our students and our alumni represent every state in the United States. And the unique thing about our DNP program is if you are living internationally but are um, registered in the United States as a registered nurse, you can actually talk to me about doing your DNP project internationally. So that is one of the cool things. And we've had several international projects over the years. We've had over 8,000 graduates from Frontier Nursing University and almost 1,200 just from our DNP program. So like I said, this speaks a lot to our achievements in being great at knowing how to do distance education. We also have a couple other achievements. Frontier has been recognized in 21, 2021 and 2022 as one of the great colleges to work for, but also for the last six years, we have been awarded the Insight into Diversity Higher Education Excellence in Diversity Award, or the HEED Award, and we have received an International Distance Learning Award um, in 2021. So these are just some of our many accomplishments that we're proud of, and it we hope that some of these things also make you feel proud and want to attend. So in addition to the pretty campus and all the awards, we also are an extremely supportive program. We have online student support groups. We call those SIGs or student interest groups, but we also have student support groups where students gather together and create something that supports their needs. So student to student support, we have faculty who mentor students uh, the majority of our content is delivered asynchronously, but there are some classroom sessions where you must attend at a certain time. We offer financial aid for our DNP program. 
we have the absolute best librarians and I'm not kidding you. It is something that is said on all of our evals or our DNP program, but we also have something called the diversity impact program, which is held once a year. It used to be on campus, but now to make it more accessible to people, we hold that online. So we really, really do live our mission. So again, I'm Dr. Cara Jefferson, director of the DNP program. Here at the bottom, you see pictures of various people in various positions here at Frontier Nursing University. But the way that our program works is every single course has a course coordinator. That is the person managing the course. And within the course, there are typically course faculty. Every student who enters Frontier is assigned an academic advisor as well as a financial aid officer. And so those people help with, of course, your plan of study. If you're having difficulty, we are always your first contact. But we also have, because you're doing a DNP project, right? So you're doing that within a clinical site. We have credentialing coordinators. The great thing about our DNP program is we currently have one credentialing coordinator who is dedicated to just do work with the DNP students. And of course, we have our IT specialists who help with anything IT related. So we really, really want to support students in all the ways that we think. And we're constantly looking for ways because we're in the business of quality improvement to make these things a little bit better. So now for the nitty gritty, the real reason you came to this session. Why on earth should you get a DNP? You have already been to school a long time, right? You got your registered nursing license and then you went and you obtained your master's of science in nursing to become an advanced practice registered nurse. Well, there's a lot of reasons to get your DNP, but I would almost dare to say that the answer to this question is almost highly individualized. And the reason I say that is because your reason for getting a DNP is very different from my reason for getting a DNP. I was one of those people who was very adamant that I did not need a DNP. I remember one of my coworkers was like, I'm going to school to get my DNP and you should come with me. And I'm like, I don't need that. And then when I looked into the program, I realized that some of the stuff that I was doing in my day-to-day -day job is some of the stuff that was already taught in the DNP. What I didn't realize at the time was that the DNP would actually elevate my understanding of all of that, make me a more impactful and greater leader, and change my view of the entire healthcare systems. So now I look at almost everything as a quality improvement project. Our DNP project is primarily a quality improvement project. And we're not like other programs that tell you they're focused in healthcare leadership or executive leadership or policy or any of the things. You come out of our program so well-rounded because you get all of those skills all together. But we also know that it takes an average of 17 years to implement new knowledge that people are writing about, publishing in journals, into clinical practice. And that is a huge gap. And so the DNP degree actually bridges the gap between what is currently in the literature, what are those best practices, and what your patients are actually getting today. So it actually helps you become a better clinician because you develop the expertise to lead and improve care within your community. You do real world implementation and application. So it's not some abstract concept that you're just doing over here. You're actually putting that into practice. And it's a terminal degree, just like a PhD. So this is the time that I actually like to take a second and actually explain, well, there are so many different degrees that you could get. Why should I get a DNP versus a PhD or a doctor of midwifery or um a doctorate in education. Well, you could, you could get all of those things, right? People get a PhD because they like to do research. People get a doctorate of midwifery because they only want to stay so narrowly focused on midwifery. And other people get an educational doctorate because 
they want to someday teach. Well, the great thing about the DNP is it allows you to do all those things that I just said. So you don't need to go and get all those other degrees and then come back and get your DNP. The DNP is so broad and it's a clinical practice degree. So there are a lot of clinicians who don't like writing 150 or 100 page papers. That's not what our DNP is about. Our DNP takes all of the stuff that is currently being researched and putting it into practice. So what are some of our admissions criteria and requirements? Well, if you're a postmaster student, meaning you did not go to Frontier Nursing University to obtain your MSN, you ha have to come in with either your MSN, your master's in nursing or a master's of science in a related field. And you must also have an unencumbered current active registered nursing license in one of the United States. Doesn't matter which state, does not have to be Kentucky, just one of the states. You also must have national certification as a nurse practitioner or a certified nurse midwife. You must have at least a 3.0 grade, grade point average. And of course, you must pass a background check. Those are the minimum requirements. If you are currently enrolled as a student in one of Frontier's program, you of course already met qualification number one, the MSN, the MN, or the MS in nursing. We already know that you have a current active and registered nursing license in the United States with no encumbrances. We do go back and check that again, just to make sure nothing's changed, but you also write a narrative statement and you do the background check. So let's talk a little bit about our programs of study. So currently, our postmaster's DNP program of study is 30 credits. And if you compare our program to many of the other programs out there, on average, the other programs are about 36 credits, and we're right at 30. So we're already saving you money right there because we figured out that we know how to do this in 30 credits. But our plan of study is currently 18 months, which equates to six terms. So let me explain what that means. At Frontier, we don't do semesters. Like a lot of schools that most people have been to have 15 week long semesters, and you can do that a winter or a spring, a summer and a fall, right? Well, we actually have a winter, a spring, a summer and a fall. So we have four terms a year. Each term is 13 weeks, but students are only in class for 11 weeks. So things are moving quite rapidly in these terms. And we offer every single course, every single term. So that's another thing that sets us apart from other schools. I can tell you that while our program of study is six terms in 18 months, Currently, it is taking DNP students just about eight terms to finish their program, just because we know that you guys are all actively working clinicians and you all have busy lives. And I'll explain how that can happen a little bit later on, but that is our current plan of study. It's also worth noting that our programs of study can change at any moment. So anything that I'm showing you today truly only, apply, only applies to today, and it can change by the time you're admitted into our program. So here are the didactic courses in our DNP program. There are six didactic courses. If you are a current FNU student or you have ever attended FNU, you may have taken some of the courses that have an asterisk next to them. Um, that would be epidemiology and biostatistics, evidence-based practice, or principles of independent practice, which is now called fundamentals of business and, and finance and advancing healthcare. If not, if you haven't attended Frontier in the past, you would take all of those courses in addition to nurses educator, ethics and health policy, and leadership and organizational dynamics. And the great thing about our didactic courses is you're not learning this stuff just to learn this stuff and never applying it. Every last one of our DNP courses 
is at the application level, which means we are at the highest level of Bloom's taxonomy. And you don't just learn it and forget it. You learn it and it scaffolds in every single class that you take so that by the time you get to your DNP project, you truly have a, a big, bigger picture of what is truly happening in your organization, in your site, in healthcare, and in quality improvement. And I also want to note that our course numbers and names are also subject to change as we go through revisions every chain, every term. So don't get caught up in the numbers and course names right now. But in addition to our didactic courses, we have, whoops, I don't know what happened. Here we go. We have our DNP clinical project courses. And so these are four courses. And I like to think about these as one giant course because your DNP project isn't four different things. It's one big thing, but because of the way our program is structured, we have to break it up into terms. And so one year of your time at Frontier is dedicated to your DNP project. And so the, for, the first course is a DNP clinical project preparation course. Then it's a planning course, an implementation course, and a dissemination course. Here you'll see timelines for the number of hours a week that we expect students to see in each course. Again, that too is subject to change as we make modifications to our program. But the things that don't change is for planning. We expect for you to be on site, and we'll talk about that in the second half of the presentation, on site at least two days per week, whatever that looks like for you and your site. And in implementation, you must be present as the project manager for a minimum of three full days per week. So while in planning, it may not be full days in implementation, it truly is three full days per week. And then for project dissemination and evaluation, the only requirement is that you present on site. So we know that we have students who move all over the place, but writing takes a whole bunch of skill. And having deliverables that you can use at conferences or publishing a paper or all those things, it takes a little bit of time. So we don't have the same requirements for the clinical project course dissemination as with the other courses. So we've talked a little bit about the DNP bound experience, which is the two and a half day bound, uh, two and a half day campus experience where you get to meet us and be connected, ready, and inspired. We talked about our six practice-oriented didactic courses, which are at the application level. And then we talked that our DNP project is actually about a year. We put it over three terms because we didn't include the prep course, but really it's a year. And so if all of that interests you, and it all sounds doable, our upcoming application deadlines are January 10th to begin coursework on April 8th, 2024, and also April 3rd, 2024, to begin coursework on July 8th, right after the holiday. In order to complete your application, there are a couple of things that everybody will need. You will need to complete an online application. You will also need to complete the essay requirements. You will need to have a resume or a CV. So let's talk about that for a minute because Sometimes I get questions from applicants in my inbox like, what kind of stuff is supposed to be on my resume or CV? So remember, when you submit your application to us, that's all we get. We're not having interviews with you. We don't get that one-to-one -one conversation. So I need you to put your best foot forward, not only with your resume or CV, but also with your essay. You wanna make sure that that essay is grammatically correct the best way to do that is to read it aloud before you submit it to make sure that you take care of all of those errors, but also that your CV has every single thing that you've done. If you've been a preceptor, if you've been invited to speak somewhere as a guest speaker or lecturer, or you've completed a podium presentation, or you've published in a scholarly journal, all of those things plus community service should all be included in that CV or resume. You will also have to submit health professional references. The best person 
for that is truly whoever your immediate supervisor is, because they will give us the greatest picture of who you are and your capabilities to complete this program. A lot of times people pick people who know and love them. And that's great, right? Because we all want to pick people who know and love us for all of the things, but we're looking for very specific things and your immediate supervisor can really, really do that for you. And then of course your transcripts. So I've told you quite a few things that are already unique about Frontier. And the other thing that I'll say is one of the other things we pride ourselves on is our low tuition. Our tuition for our DNP program is $665 per credit hour, which is lower than most programs, the majority of programs out there. So you are getting all of our knowledge at a bargain rate. There are currently two methods that you can enter our DNP program. So if you are currently enrolled in Frontier right now as a postgraduate certificate student or a Master of Science in Nursing student in any track, you can go onto the website right now and complete the direct admission application. If not, you would complete the standard admission application on that same page. You would just select that option. And that's for anybody who's a nurse practitioner or a certified nurse midwife, or you're returning after being out of Frontier for a, a term or three terms or whatever the case may be. And so the method for entering the DNP you follow is dependent upon when you graduate from FNU or another program and when you want to begin the DNP courses. This is also the time that if you are currently enrolled as a Frontier MSN or PGC student, I highly encourage you, because I get lots of questions about this at every session, I highly encourage you to open up your degree audit and at the bottom of your degree audit, and I think it's shaded in gray or light blue, there are links at the bottom. And one of those links is called transitioning into the DNP. I encourage you to open that up because it has very specific things, very specific information for those of you who are interested in that. So I will stop screen sharing and open it up for you to ask me questions. Good evening, everyone. Hi, I Nina. have a question. How you doing, Dr. Jefferson? Good. Um, I'm hoping to start the DMP program in this upcoming January. I did do the direct admission process. However, um, I know that there's a criteria that you have to have finished your, you know, have taken your boards and all of that stuff before you start. What is the cutoff for that? So actually, you don't have to take your boards before you start. If you are a only, so caveat, only if you are a current FNU student. What you would still apply with the direct admissions process, you would still start your first term of DNP classes, but by the end of that first term, by then you have to have successfully passed your boards in order to continue. Okay, so by the end of the first term. Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Hi, Mary. Hi. Hi. Um, my my name's Mary, and I am parked outside my house because I was listening on my way home. But I've been a practicing midwife for um, since 2017, so um, that none of that other stuff will be an issue with me. I've taken my boards, um, and I had a couple of questions. The first question is, you said that um, currently it's taking people um, eight semester or eight terms to finish their projects, even though it's sort of designed for six. What happens um, in terms of what, like, what is the tuition change uh, or what, what happens if, if you do have to go over the six? That's a great question. So as far as tuition, we have Frontier has a board of directors and they determine any tuition increases. Um, I think last year, maybe tuition increased by like, I want to say maybe 20 bucks 
um, per credit hour. And so whatever it is for that year, that's the only thing that changes, but that would, that would be the only difference you would pay. You're not paying for it taking you longer, the six terms versus eight terms, that part, you're okay. not paying anything extra. In fact, if you're a companion DNP student, um, companion DNP students have two years to complete their entire DNP degree and postmaster students have two and a half years to complete the DNP degree. Okay, that's that's encouraging. Um, my other question is, um, is so like I know that you have. It seems like you, you, it's a it's a pretty flexible program, which is one of the things that's so appealing to me. Um, I am currently um, also so I'm working part time as a, a midwife, but I'm working um, as a a clinical instructor for BSNs. Um, and I was just wondering, like, is there a way to clump things so that I'm doing more in the summer and less during, um, like, less during the fall and, win and um, winter? So it, that's a great question. And I, I, I'm going to say it depends. So I have okay. students who sometimes petition to me and ask me if instead of the six credit hours, they, you have to make a very compelling argument, you know, and instead of the six credit hours for the didactic courses that are assigned, can they sometimes do nine? And honestly, it's a case by case basis and it depends on what you write and how you can show me that you're capable, right? So like if a student is barely passing or barely passed one course, I'm not going to approve that because that would not be setting you up for success. And my goal is to see all students successful. So we do have some flexibility. And also even going back to your prior question, there are some students who just need to slow things down. And that's what happens. Things happen in people's lives. And we recognize that. So even though we say that this is 18 months, well, we're actually giving you a little bit longer. So like if you're a companion DNP, it's not 18 months because you've, they've already taken some of the classes, right? But we still give you the grace to be able to complete things at the pace that it works best for you. Okay. Um, and so one, here's another question because one of the things that I was sort of interested in exploring more is sort of expanding um, telemedicine in the postpartum period. So um, be, just because um, in my own practice, I found, I've been finding that, um, you know, dropping people, like just saying goodbye to people after they have their babies and not having those frequent visits anymore, I, I feel like things get missed. And I think that, um, you know, that people are more at risk for perinatal mood disorders and, um, and and I find that um, those telehealth visits are really beneficial to those patients. If if I wanted to explore tur turning that into a DNP project, you mentioned some um, like requirements about being in person at the site. Um, yeah, and so that you, is you, that is a great yeah. question. Yeah, and so actually I'm going to talk about what sites kind of look like in the next part. So I'm going to hold your question and answer it in the Ooh. next part because people get real excited about the DNP project and so do I, but I think it'll make more sense after the next part. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, oh, I had an I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go Come on. Questions. Yeah. Come on. Bring um, it on. In terms of financing, um, are there financing options? Like, no. or is it like, here's a term, give me a full check for. <laughs> it is. So I am not the financial aid guru, but we do right. have a num We do have an email address where you can contact financial aid to talk about those things. You can apply for, uh, you can fill out a FAFSA. I do know that the federal application for federal student aid, there are loans, there's the whole thing that you can go through, but they would know more about all the other options. I try to leave the money part up to them. Otherwise, my head is just, there's too much happening up in there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. 
All right. And the, and the uh, email address will be on one of the slides later on. And we Perfect. can also Thank pop you. it in the chat for you. Great. Thanks. Okay. Thank I'll you. stop. <laughs> okay. All right. I am really, I don't want to mess up people's names because people always mess up my name. So how do you say your name? Uh, it's Ferreira. Ferreira. Okay. Hi, Ferreira. Hi. Um, so my question I put in the chat, but I don't know if anybody saw it. And um, so I'm in my first term at FNU. Um, and I, when I first applied to FNU, um, there was the direct admin option. And then I saw something that it's going away. Mm -hmm. And then I saw something about the companion DNP. Um, and I just don't see how realistically I can add three more classes in my current MSN program. I don't, I, I mean, my, my question is, how is that done? And um, when I do want to apply for my DMP, um, I'm assuming that I have to get a job first and have a so that is, that is a and... great question. And here's the thing, and I talk about this at the next part too, but technically, do I want you to have a job somewhere? Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. It makes your life easier. It makes your project go a whole lot smoother, but... You also don't have to do your project while working as an APRN. You can do your project while working as an RN. So there is that. The other piece of it is how do you get those three courses added? Well, I'm not sure if you can since we just started it, um, since we actually kind of closed down the companion thing, but you're about to go into academic advising season. So talk to your advisor. It is not necessary for you to come into my DNP program and have those three courses. In fact, all of those courses are about to be changing anyway, starting next term. And then the and so right now, when we originally had them, we had them as MSN DNP courses because we had the application level content. But now that we've taken them away, they are fully, fully DNP. So the level of content has been up the notch. Um, but yes, I would say definitely talk to your academic advisor about that. And even when you come into the DNP program later on, you don't have to take it. Like if your mind is so full from everything that you're learning, trying to become a new practitioner, don't worry about it. You will get the information once you come into the DNP program. Okay. So just the, so like when I apply, it would be a standard application or it wouldn't be. Like, I guess it's changing now. So by yes, the time it is I apply, I would have to be just have a standard application, but it might be a little different because I'm a returning FNU student. Yes. The criteria. I mean. Yes, that is right. And so as we're getting closer and closer, as the deadlines get closer and closer, we iron out some of the intricacies of that process and what we're doing with that process. Like, you know, you start with a plan this year. And then stuff, then things change, right? And so I can't tell you the exact plan at this moment because even I don't know the exact plan. Some part of it may or may not change and I don't want to give you any incorrect information. But yes, so as the time goes, I do these every single quarter or as you get closer, feel free to email me okay. because I will always answer your email. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Nora, I see you have a question. I think a little bit of what she was asking about, but my main question was, I just graduated in June. And around the time of graduation, I got an email about the companion DMP that if you already took those three classes, okay, you won't need to take it again. But and also the entrance method is a little different. So what I was asking is, if you plan to start before 2020, at least 2026, if I'm not mistaken, would that still be considered companion DMP or did you, yes. am I going to miss out on that? No, you, if you start before 2026, you are good. After 2026, I am no longer accepting any of the DNP MSN courses because by then those courses will have expired. The content in those courses will have expired because we won't be teaching them anymore and we've already revised the courses. So as long as you start by then, you're okay. And that will be fall. The last time to apply is fall of 2026. Is that what? Am I saying o it right? October, yes, 2026. October will be the last time. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much. 
You're welcome. Nina. Thank you again. Um, just one last question. I see that a lot of the courses like Nurse as Educator, Ethics and Health Policy, I had from a, my previous um, master's in nursing education. Would any of those credits um, carry over at all? It was at another institution, however. So here's, so you're in a unique situation that not a lot of other students are. We talk a little bit about our course transfer policies and procedures during DNP bound. And so there is that. But if you have, in your case, now I'm not talking about everybody's case here. I'm talking about Nina's case in particular, because Nina has a degree in a specialty that covers at least one of our courses. So in your case, Nina, you would apply for gap analysis credit. You can find the gap analysis procedures in our catalog, because what you'd be asking for is for me to consider not just one course in the place of nurse's educator, but your entire master's of science degree in the place of one course. And so anytime it's more than three courses, a gap analysis is the best way to go. Okay. As far as anybody else, if you're thinking about course transfer policies, because our courses are DNP, we follow DNP competencies and they're at the application level when a lot of the MSN courses that people take are not. MSN courses in general do not transfer into our DNP unless there's some cir special circumstance or you honestly think so. So it's up to the student to read the policies and procedures and decide whether or not they're going to apply for transfer credit. Okay. And what will be the deadline for me to do that if I'm planning to start in January? If you're planning to start in January, when you come to Bound, you just would not register for the nurse's educator course. When you okay. do course registration, you would leave that course off. And then we would, it's not just me. I don't make the decision by myself. Mm -hmm. the, registra the registrar would eventually let you know before, you know, I usually try to get it done within a week. Sometimes it takes two, our, our group of us. And then we let you know so that you know how to plan. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions before I go back into the next part of this? Okay. Well, let me screen share all over again. All right, so I might have probably skipped the slide. Nope, I didn't. So let's talk about the project, which is my favorite part of this whole thing. Um, everybody gets really concerned when it comes to selecting, oh my gosh, what is my DNP project going to be about? And so this is just a little quick quick and dirty summary of kind of what we do. Every single student's project in the DNP is driven by the needs of the site. What does that mean? That means a lot of times students come into the DNP and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so passionate about XYZ. I want to do my project on XYZ. And so my question becomes, is there an evidence-based gap on XYZ in your site? Or is it that you just really like talking about that and you want to do all the things with it? So I, su I usually suggest that you start talking to people at your site or you start noticing the things that are you think may not be right and completely in line with guidelines. Talk to your quality improvement department or committee. Some places don't have a QI department. Some places call it a research department and QI is housed in that research department. Start talking to those people. If you're in a hospital, start talking to the service director or the unit manager because somebody somewhere knows that there are gaps. If you show me a perfect hospital system or a perfect clinic that has nothing wrong, I will be highly, highly shocked right? There's always something to improve. So meet with the key people. Maybe it's even the chief nursing officer. Remember, everybody is reporting data to CMS and there are quality metrics that everybody has to achieve. Those are great 
project topic ideas. Additionally, all projects are focused on patient outcomes and are within a clinical setting. So one question that I always get is, well, I'm faculty at ABC University down the road. I would like to do a project on my faculty on XYZ. And I'm like, okay, does your ABC University have a clinic system? Because that's where you'd be able to do your project. You can't use faculty as the subjects for your project. We actually don't have subjects because we're not doing research. We're doing quality improvement. So make sure that it's a clinical setting. And with clinical setting, I think this answers one of the questions from earlier. The clinical setting is what the clinical setting is. So I used to work in emergency medicine. And then I also used to work in urgent care. And even before COVID hit, my I was going back and forth between two states and it got exhausting. And my emergency department team was like, hmm, we have so many people who are using the emergency department who shouldn't be here, right? Let's start a telehealth division. So even before COVID came, I've been working telehealth. And so telehealth became my clinical setting. So if you are a provider in a telehealth setting or your clinic or system does telehealth and you're part of it, that telehealth setting is considered a clinical setting. What doesn't work is if you are volunteering at a site and you want to volunteer at a telehealth clinic, we do not accept those projects. You also can't do your quality improvement project at a church. If the church is not licensed as a clinical or medical center with credentialed providers, it's not a site that we can use. Additionally, all of our projects focus on one of the six Institute of Medicine domains of quality care, equitable, timely, efficient, patient-centered, safe, and effective care. Those are the, the quality domains. And they all have some degree of patient engagement and team engagement. Why? Because you're not doing this project because Dr. Jefferson wants you to. And you're not doing this because in order to get your DNP, you absolutely must do a DNP project, which is true. But you're also doing it because you want to impact outcomes and you want to impact patient care within your community. So you never, ever sell this to anybody in your site as I'm doing my DNP and this is what my D I think I would like to do for my DNP project. It's more of a, I would like to improve patient outcomes on X, Y, Z topic to provide safe, effective, patient centered, timely, efficient, or equitable care to our patients. The other thing is you want to pick something that solves a daily problem. So you don't want to pick a project topic or a gap in care that you see and you only see it like once every four months. That is not a good idea for a DNP project. You want to pick something that if in your clinic you see if 70 to 80% of your patients are obese, obesity is a great topic. If none, nobody in your practice is screening people for the flu and you will be implementing your project during the flu season, that's a good project. It doesn't work if you're doing a flu project and you're implementing your project in the summer. So you have to kind of be mindful of some of those things as you think about it. But as long as it serves a good population of people, it's considered a population health project and that's what we want. And so what we do, you go to Bound, we talk a little bit about projects at Bound, but then once you get to the pre-planning course that I am currently course coordinator of, I assign you one of the DNP project faculty and you have individualized counseling and feedback on your project topic and gap. So what does that look like? Well, you can come in and you can propose an idea and they're gonna ask you a whole bunch of questions and they will say, yes, I approve, or no, I don't approve, schedule another meeting. And that's okay. You know, a lot of people are looking at it as, oh, I failed. You actually didn't fail. You talk things through, and we just gave you feedback so that you could strengthen this, because again, our goal is to make you successful. 
and to support you in the best way we know how. And that is also why we do expectation management during that visit. We look at your program of study, where you are in your program of study. We look to see if you're taking any other classes when you're taking, you know, or what your plans are around that. What's going on in your life? Because listen, here's the thing about me. Work-life balance is very important to me, but also people are important to me. While I recognize that I am here as the DNP program director, and I'm telling you about our DNP program, at the end of the day, you're a person and you have family and you have obligations. And I want you to do well because you can only do well if you're feeling your best. So people always come and talk to me about wellness and well-being and all of those things because I truly, truly believe in balance and resiliency and your well-being because you can't do anything if you are not at your best. In that course, we also talk about clinical compliance and credentialing and also the possibility of whether or not your site is going to make you undergo IRB, which is Institutional Review Board, because even though we're doing quality improvement and we meet the federal guidelines for quality improvement, some of the larger hospital systems still want you to undergo an IRB process. So we talk through the whole thing with you in that, um, in that time. And the reason this is important is as a DNP scholar, we want you to be innovative. Again, going back to our mission statement. Before Henry Ford, you look at this quote, if Henry Ford says, if I asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Never did people imagine the possibility of a car. And that's kind of where you come in and where Frontier comes in. We want you to be innovative with the project ideas and do things that truly work for your site. So as you plan ahead, these are the things that I want you to think about. Do you have a potential site? If not, start looking. You, it's never too early to start looking for a clinical site. I don't want anybody to wait until they get into the pre-planning course and start thinking about their sites because that is honestly too late. And you have to have an, ID, an identified clinical site by the end of week two of the term. So you need to start thinking about this now as early as possible. And then will you be working? If you're working, I highly, highly suggest that you talk to people at your site and try to be able to do your project at your site because it is a time commitment. Your entire DNP degree is a time commitment. And you have to think about if you're not working at that site, do you realistically have enough time outside of that to dedicate to volunteering at a site, still meet your work obligations, still meet the DNP project volunteer obligations, as well as your family and community service obligations, right? So think carefully about this. We know for our program, it is designed for the working clinician, but we also know that the working clinician needs a life. And so that goes back into the work-life balance. You also want to think about if you'll be starting a new job, right? If you are going to be a brand new advanced practice registered nurse, you do not want to be onboarding to a new role, trying to be the project manager of a project at a site that you don't know too much about. You want to onboard into that role early, get to know the people, because otherwise, you know, you know, there are people everywhere who are a little bit snippy. Like if you come in here and you try to tell people what to do and they've been on this job for 20 years, it's not going to go well. So make sure that you're thinking about all of those things. Also, are you planning any major life event? And sometimes we don't plan these things, right? Sometimes these things just happen unexpectedly. You get an illness in your family and now you have to care for somebody. Maybe your significant other gets a new job and that job is across the country or international and you have to move. Maybe this is the time and you accidentally, oops, or on purpose get pregnant. And it's your first child and you have to adjust to being a new parent. All of these things are important to consider the timeline of when you begin your DNP degree. And then also just your general schedule. What does that look like? What are your life responsibilities? What are your obligations to your children? 
What are your obligations to your other family members, your church, your work schedule? How many hours do you have to work to be full-time? Is there the possibility that you have enough PTO saved up so that once you're in the actual project, because that's where the time is going to be really, that's where you're going to really have a lot of time consumed. Maybe you save some of your PTO for those times. These are the things that I want you to start thinking about. So it is very doable. Like I said, we've had over 1,200 students successfully do this or close to 1,200 students do this. And so I know that you can too. The distance between who I am and who I want to be is only separated by my actions and words. There are a lot of people who come to these sessions and believe firmly like I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this in 18 months and I am going to do this and this and this. But what I can tell you is that sometimes the words and the actions are not in congruence. And I want you to be fully immersed in the process so that you are able to grow and learn in this process. And it's only when your words and your actions are able to match that things all fall into place. And that's what I want for you. So make no mistake, a DNP is a huge thing. It is a terminal degree. And of course there will be obstacles. Life is one big obstacle course after another. There's never a day where we go from point A to point Z that's in a straight line. There are all kinds of wiggly lines in between. There will be doubters. You will have people in your circle, your family, your friends, people at your job who will say, there's no reason for you to go back to school to get your DNP. Stop listening to everybody. Listen to your heart. Listen to your soul. Listen to the things that make you tick. Do the things that if your DNP is on your dream list or one of your goals, get it, but also be committed to it. You will also make mistakes. It's part of the process. I like to think of mistakes. Mistakes are synonymous with quality improvement. And at the end of this, you will be a quality improvement guru because we're going to make you one. We will give you the tools so that you can do any kind of quality improvement project in the future, and nothing will ever go 100% smoothly. But I also know, as somebody who has done this program, as well as all of my project faculty have all done this exact program, that with hard work and perseverance, there are absolutely no limits to you obtaining your DNP degree. This is a picture of one of our DNP graduates. Um, and as you can see, this picture to me just screams joy, right? And so it's not easy. But when you walk across that stage at commencement and when you impact your patients' lives in a different way that you didn't realize you could do before, you realize how successful this whole program made you. And so success is not coming to you. You are going to success by coming to Frontier and obtaining your DNP degree. If you have additional questions related to financial aid, please contact financialaid at frontier.edu. If you have admissions questions, contact FNU admissions at frontier.edu. If you have a question about a special case dealing with a project, feel free to email me, cara.jefferson at frontier.edu. And now I am going to stop screen sharing to answer some more questions because I like questions and I know that people have questions. So go ahead, Mary. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Jefferson. Uh, I, I appreciate you. Um, I I had one final question and and I just wanted to ask, or confirm that um, I, so it sounds like, as you can tell, I have been already giving a lot of thought to my project. I've been in practice for several years. Um, so it's definitely very patient um, focused. And I, my question for you is, it sounds like there, so I don't have to have a separation in terms of, I can work while working on my DNP. I don't have to like swear that I did not get paid for any of the time that I invested in 
in no. the implementation of project. No. And so a lot, I will say probably 90 to 95 percent of our students are working clinicians. There are some students who like are in between things like their spouse may have been in the military and they know that they're moving. So they don't want to get a job because they'll be moving that whole thing. Um, but our program is meant for the working clinician and we're not, I don't tell people like you have to take off from your job for a whole three months to get your implementation done. Our clinical hours are built into the program because as you are working, you are incorporating your project into the workflow. So all the meetings that you have pertaining to your project, all the work that you're doing to plan your project go into your clinical hours. And we do, um, you know, right now, I think on our website, it says 360 clinical hours, but it's really 500. We evaluated like what our students are doing and they're getting 500 hours. We're not asking students to do more than 360. It's that you're already doing it. They're already doing it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks again. This has been very informative and, um, and helpful. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Well, if there are no other questions, this is being recorded and these are published on the um, FNU. Rosalie, I'm really bad at this. Rosalie is not here anymore, but she will publish this onto one of the website pages. You can always go back and rewatch the recording. And if you have any other questions, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out and I will get those answers to you as quickly as possible. And so right now, start working on your application, get it as good as it can be, submit your application. And I look forward to meeting all of you during our DNP bound sessions. Thank hey, Dr. you. Dr. Jefferson, I have one more quick thing. Okay. Um, the DNP application fee is being waived right now. So um, for anybody that wants to apply now, you don't have to pay the $50, no DNP application fee. Thank you, Bobby. Thanks. Yes. So that is absolutely good news. And I didn't have that for my last, the last one that I did yesterday. So a waived application fee is always a great thing. And I appreciate you telling us that. Hi, Nora, you have a question? Can you apply now knowing you're going to start in 2026 is that possible no <laughs> yeah you can't yeah. apply right now and so our applications open we generally have two applications open at one time and then as this one starts to close and the next one opens and we have a rolling admissions process okay. don't worry we sometimes to... just have these specials okay okay thank you you're welcome all right, so it has been an hour. Thank you for tuning in and please reach out if you have anything, any questions. Have a good evening.